If you want to learn about Python Fest API package and how you can install and run it on your local computer in 15 minutes, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step complete tutorial, especially for beginner, how you're going to install Fest API on your local computer, build amazing API that interact with database in JSON, and eventually how you can make API call with Postman or even with Fest API documentation that is pre-built for you. So stop everything you're doing, stay tuned, we are about to start. Welcome back guys and thank you for keep watching. So as I said, today I'm going to show you how you can build on your local computer a Fest API server that interact with the local JSON database in less than 15 minutes. And as you know me by now, I prepare everything for you on my GitHub repository that I will share in the YouTube description below. And if you are not following my YouTube channel yet, I really recommend you to subscribe. I'm sharing amazing tutorials every week. Special recently, I shared tutorial about Python Streamlit and how you can build and deploy Python Streamlit web app. But today I'm going to focus on Fast API, Python API package that you can install on your local computer and then deploy to one of your server. The installation is very easy and you're going to see once we're going to start encoding how simple and how straightforward it is. So if you don't have my repository, I'm going to share with you on my YouTube description that you can go and start. But now I'm going to show you really line by line how I'm installing and coding with Fest API. So the first thing you want to do, you want to do pip3 install Fest API and also pip3, uh, if you have Python that is not Python 3, you can use uh, pip, okay? So I'm using pip3 and now I'm going to install uvcorn. uvcorn is basically the uh, server that allow us to run Fest API on our local computer. Okay, it's also uh, a cool package that allowing you to uh, launch a, a virtual server and eventually run Fast API. So this is the two package that you need to install. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, call the Fast API um, package and I'm going to declare a, the a Fast API app. And basically that's it, we have API, uh, we have Fast API application. And this is how you calling that by using Ubicorn, you, you, you using the name of the uh, uh, Python file main, the name of the Fast API app. And then you're doing dash dash reload, I had a misspelled here, not Ubicorn, Ubicorn. And that's it, we have a Fast API on our local computer as you see right now but we don't have anything so it give us not found so let's write our first api code we're gonna use a get method so this is how you declare the uh, fast api a route you're doing a help dot get slash this is the main route the index and then you define a function that come with this uh, route and will i will declare the index one it's not gonna get any uh, parameter and i will return a result equal hello a json um, response very simple as you can see let's save it and now let's go back let's refresh the page and bam guys we have our first hello a uh, in fast api our first api um, route and now I'm going to show you an amazing thing that's coming with Fast API, the Fast API documentation with Swagger. It's basically reading our code and build the API documentation uh, as our code a route, API route that we have. So it will keep developed by itself. We also have another uh, Redux or documentation with Fast API. This is the Redux option. Also amazing, more readable option, less playable but also an option to show your documentation. So this is when they say Fast API, this is what they mean. You write like few lines and you have documentation and you have API in a matter of seconds. This is why it's Fast API. So today I'm gonna build a um, Fast API that basically uh, allow you to interact with a local database in JSON. 
So we're going to use the get method that we actually uh, sending uh, item ID and then I need to pull uh, and check if this item ID is is uh, found in our local database. Okay. And uh, I also another option to basically create a new uh, item in our database. So now I'm defining the get item basically is a function to allow us to retrieve a parameter or to retrieve item from the our JSON database. I'm using the async because it will make our server respond faster. Async allow us allow the server to return answer depend on when he finding the uh, relevant information and then accept more and more uh, API call. Okay, so as you can see right now, I declare the route item. And now I'm going to uh, go with parameter 1 or 2. This is the item ID. And as you see, I'm returning basically the item ID. This is what I wrote in the uh, FS API code. But we want to extend this. <clears throat> and let's go and check the documentation. As you see, I didn't add any documentation, but it's happened automatically. This is why it's fast API. We already have now get index and get item documentation to share with our colleague or our client. Okay, next let's write the app a post in order to create items in our database JSON that soon I'm going to declare it. Okay, so in order to declare a post request, we're using app.post and I'm going to use store item or you can use also create item. It's really whatever uh, you feel like more readable for you. And here I'm going to uh, uh, add a parameter uh, item that it's come with item class and soon I will declare what is mean the item class. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to basically show you what is the database that we are going to use how it's built. It's basically a JSON database that store item and those item are basically a YouTube a channel and YouTube description. That's it. This is the object. Okay. Every object have two field channel and description. And this is now we're going to declare the item and it's something that come also with Python. It's called a uh, Python Pydentic. Okay. And we're going to import the um, base model. And with this ba base model, we can declare object that already also have um, option for validation and also working together with the fast API documentation. You're going to see it very soon. So let's declare the class item with the base model as injected. And now we're going to have the channel. The channel will be a string and also a description and also a string, but it can be also default noun, none. And when I record the video, I realized that I have a mistake. It needs to be description, not this picture. So when you're going to go to YouTube, uh, when you're going to go to my Python uh, repository in GitHub, it will already be fixed. So don't, don't worry about it. So we declare and the item, the class item basically. And this is what we're going to send in the post request. Okay, so we have the index, we have the app get and we have the app uh, post. And now let's refresh our documentation. As, as you can see, <clears throat> it's uh, already built our documentation and how you can use it. So because we have Swagger with Fast API, you can already uh, send information and actually interact with our documentation and see how it works, how our as Fast API server uh, actually working. So here I'm going to uh, modify the request body. I'm going to do execute. And as you can see, I returning basically the item. I'm getting a HTTP code 200. So it means our fast API is working properly. And now I'm going to build the part that actually interact with our uh, JSON database. Okay, so the documentation is working. And let me show you another way that you can interact with your fast API using a postman. Okay, you're just adding um, the uh, URL of your fast API or your API uh, link. Let's add the body. Let's do row and here let's choose the request body. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Let's end. Okay, so I'm getting 422 as HTTP response. 
I think I think I just I didn't send the body as a JSON. So this is why I'm getting this response. I'm getting um, I'm I def undefined entity. So let's change it to JSON and now it's working because we send the correct header and we're getting 200. Okay, so this is another way that you can use a Postman in order to check your API if you don't want to check from the uh, first API Swagger documentation. Okay, so let's review our first API code. As you saw until now, everything is working. We have the class item that is built from PyDentic um, model. And then we declare also the app get index, app get uh, item, and app post the uh, store item. I'm gonna change the store item also to async, so our server will respond fast, faster to request. You don't have to use async, but it's it's a, a faster way for your server to handle multiply requests. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the second part. I'm gonna declare a database, a JSON file with data.json and basically now we're gonna interact with a local database with our first API. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So we need to create two functions. One of them is uh, to store new information in the database and the second one is to get information from our database. So let's start with the store item. Okay, so I'm gonna declare a function. I'm gonna call it store item to DB. Okay, and the data that we are entering is basically the item object from our post uh, API request. Okay, so I'm gonna do with open. I'm gonna open a file. If the file not exists in our uh, repository, it will create the file by, by itself. You just need to make sure you have the proper permission. And then we're gonna do uh, JSON. We're gonna do dump and we're gonna dump the a data, the item data into the file, okay? Let's also import the JSON uh, library. Okay. And basically this is the function, very simple. And now I'm gonna integrate it with our API post uh, request. So in order to make it work, what I'm gonna do right now, we need, first of all, to read all the item that we have in our database, basically to get the JSON uh, database. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna append to this JSON object or to this JSON array, our file, basically our database file, we're gonna append, because it's JSON, we can append a new item. And once we append a new item, then we can uh, again uh, store this new uh, database or store the, this new array into the uh, database file. As you can see right now in the screen, I know it's not the proper way. You can also use SQLite or MySQL to save data, but this is one of the way to store a data in a JSON file with Python. And I'm just showing you how you can do it also on your local computer. So next function that I'm going to declare, it's read item from database. Basically this function is checking if there is a file name a database file. And if there is a file, it will return the JSON object back of the JSON array back to the variable. And then we basically gonna check if this array uh, include the item ID. So what I'm doing right now, I'm doing try. I'm, tr I'm trying to open with a read the database file, okay? And then I'm basically using JSON to load the file to a JSON uh, parameter. And if this file not exists, so I'm getting an uh, exception, and this exception is a file not uh, exist exception, then I'm gonna return item uh, array, empty array. I need to return something basically. Okay, let's return the item. And that's it, those are the two extra functions that we need to declare. Read item from database and store item to database. Okay, so let's go over again the API post request, the store item. So we're reading all the item in the database and then we appending the new item that we sent from our API call and then we store it to the database as we do in JSON dump. And then we also returning the item that we received to show the client that we got his request. 
Okay, so this one is working. And as you can see right now, I don't have any database, but once I will uh, work with this API, if the file is not exists, it will create us the database JSON. So now I'm going to send a post request. Everything is working. We got 200 OK. And we are, you can also see the server log. And here is the file. It's created, the JSON file. And it's including our item, channel, and description. So until now, everything is working properly. You need to clap to yourself. Guys, you did amazing job. Okay, we can also uh, try again. We can now try the documentation. Let's just send another uh, request so we're gonna have more information in the JSON file. Execute and perfect. If someone will use our documentation, it also will work for him. So we were able to interact with a with database JSON file, store new information, and now we will try and modify the get item function okay so i'm gonna go back now to the code to main.python and now let's change our uh, get request of getting item so what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna read the item from the database so this items basically have its array of item and now i'm gonna check if first of all if the item id it's not smaller than zero because we're using here array. I'm not using basically a legit item ID. I'm just using the array index. I'm making it simple as possible so it will be easier for you to understand. But if you want to use a proper uh, ID system, you need to check with array and with a loop to see if item ID is exists in one of the items that we're getting back. But here I'm just checking if the item ID is actually a legit array index. It's smaller. It's not smaller than zero. And also it's not a bigger than the size of the array. And if one of these conditions exists, I'm going to return the HTTP exception. Okay, also a um, library that comes, an object that comes, sorry, with the first API. I'm going to do status 404. Remember, we are now writing a server so we need to have a proper a response to our client side and also detail item not found but if the item id actually is in a, is valid then we're gonna return the item that found in the item id location so if the item id is zero or one then we're gonna return a proper answer because we have only two uh, items inside our data json so now we'll try our API and I will try the index 2. Index 2 it's not exist because it's 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 like location 3 but index 1 that is location 2 it exists so we are returning the proper item from our JSON database and now let's also check and try it out with our Swagger documentation that coming with first API. I'm going to try index number 1 and we're getting 200 uh, HTTP code, item found, and it's basically pulling the item. So guys, I wanna clap, we did amazing job. We just learned how to use, install, and run fast API on our local computer with three different API endpoints that interact with a local JSON file, everything in Python, especially for beginner. Okay, guys, if you like the video, please subscribe because next video I'm going to do about Docker and how you can take this fast API and make a Docker image and eventually also upload it to AWS as a Docker image. And also don't forget to buy me a coffee. Your support is very important. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and follow to the rest of the video. Please like, subscribe and leave comment below. And keep following because I'm gonna release more and more amazing videos about AI, about AWS, about DevOps, about a lot of interesting stuff. Thank you so much.